Welcome back. We're on part two. Time for the hot tags of the week. Let's start off with something really stupid. I don't know what the hell happened here. A bunch of fans mistook Brad Maddox for CM Punk and then got all pissed off that he wasn't CM Punk. <laughs> the fuck makes you think that he's CM Punk? You guys Wait, see what? this? There was a house show in Las Vegas. Brad Maddox came out and everybody was like, oh, CM Punk is back. And then it was like, wait, he's not CM Punk? Oh, fuck you. Why aren't you CM Punk? He didn't pretend to be. They're fucking yeah. idiots. You see, this is why people need to stop fucking shooting videos and shit with their phones, like, portrait, and this shit won't happen. People get shitty pictures and then let their imaginations run wild. <laughs> like, he didn't come out to CM Punk's theme. I don't know what they would have gotten confused about it. I mean, he, sure, he looks more like CM Punk than, you know... Titus O'Neil, but, like, I don't see why people would get confused about it. Well, I'm, uh, I'm Googling Brad Maddox and see what he looks like nowadays. Is he covered in tattoos and shit? I don't think so. Apparently hoodies equal Sam Punk, I don't know. <laughs> hey, there's a guy in a hoodie. Sam Punk! It's like, no, you're at Walmart right now. That's just a guy in a hoodie. I'm pretty sure it's Sam Punk. So, odd situation with that. Let's talk about some injuries. Eric Rowan was injured. Jamie Noble got injured on Raw. Tyson Kidd has gone in for his surgery. He's going to be out for about 14 months, they say, if not longer. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, the Eric Rowan one, they haven't really talked about all that much. But I've, you know, seen on the, you know, third sheet kind of thing, said it might be a serious one. The Jamie Noble one seemed like it was kind of serious, but it's not as bad, I would assume, now. And Tyson Kids is definitely serious, but what do you think's happening with these guys? Are you expecting to see Noble or Rowan back anytime soon? You think this is going to screw up the Rowan and Harper tag team? What do you think's going on with Kid? What do you guys have to say? Who wants to tag in? Well, as far as the whole Tyson Kidd scenario goes, that really sucks because he had a huge layoff before and he got better from it and then got injured again. And now he's had a decent run, done some of the probably the most entertaining work of his career and he's already gone. Uh, Jamie Noble, I heard he may have like had a collapsed lung. If that's the case, that fucking sucks. Um, Brock Lesnar's a scary dude. And Eric Rohn's the other guy, right? Yep. Okay. Faden, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about these three injuries? Well, an injury is always unfortunate, but these things, uh, it, it's sad to say, but it's expected of what they do out there. The old old saying, this isn't ballet, uh, it's going to happen. I mean, Tyson Kidd, a guy who's gone out there and done some amazing feats of athleticism, goes down with a muscle buster. And I'm hoping that doesn't come down as heat for Joe as he comes in because that guy needs all the positive backing he can get. But uh, Eric Rowan, a guy of his size, it, it's it's just bound to happen. Often this guy's going to get injured. Um, it, it's a shame because it seemed like they were finally giving him some direction getting back with Harper again, but whatever. Uh, the only thing I really wanted to see them do was get back with Bray. And honestly, they could still do that. You know, They could just have him like stand in the background, wear a sheet mask, and look creepy. He could do that while he's injured, unless he's got like his leg in a giant cast. In which case, put him in, uh, put him in that motorized wheelchair we were talking about him on there. <laughs> the motorized uh, rocking chair. Mm -hmm. I'd be up for that gimmick. Why not? I think he'd probably be creepier if he was on that. He's supposed to be like a genius or something like that. He could rig it up. Sure. Sean, what do you think about Rowan, Noble, and Kid? Uh, Rowan. Uh, I was even in a way he was back on television. Uh, kid, it sucks for Kid because Kid is like one of my favorite wrestlers. So, shit. Just like two years, isn't it? 14 months? Yeah. No. No. A year and a bit. So, he, he could come back. Um, I would I would say replace Brian Saxon with Tyson Kid on commentary because anything's better than, you know, Byron. God damn. And uh, Jimmy Noble sucks to be him. Never has all the luck, does he? Typically. 
See, I've heard one theory going around that WWE could use the Noble injury and kind of make it like a story building up to Battleground where Brock Lesnar takes out a member of the Authority each week. I'd kind of like that. Turn a negative into a positive. Next week, he knocks out Mercury. Not for real, you know. <laughs> and, you know, builds it back up. He gets Kane the next week, and then... Then we're Don't good, right? Seth on his own. There's only two weeks, isn't there? Oh, no, shit, there's like four weeks holy crap he can take out stephanie stephanie and trips yeah stephanie could take an f5 i reckon your dad did yeah and he went to hospital with a broken hip <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah but what's the worst thing that's gonna happen to stephanie she might burst a boob yeah that would be pretty bad yeah that sounds pretty fucking horrifying <laughs> Yeah, that's not like getting the though. paper cut where you're just like, ah, damn, this thing's a little bit. That's like, ow, I need fucking surgery. <laughs> like, I don't think that's uh, something that she'd be volunteering to do. Let's see what other hot tags we have here. Ah, oh, sad news. Gunner and Samuel Shaw have left TNA. See uh, you at GFW. People have been asking whenever people leave TNA our thoughts on where they should go. Would you like either of these guys in WWE, NXT, or anything like that? Or do you think that they should just be... <laughs> no, they're yeah. fucking terrible. These are like two of the worst guys they had on the roster. TNA actually did the fucking right move by not rehiring these guys. Samuel Shaw's just some fucking, um... What's the serial killer dude's name? Dexter? Rip off of that character, which is poorly done. He's still doing that? Yeah. My, not I anymore, he's not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And right now, Samuel Shaw is just, like, putting his head down and sighing, yeah. And I've hated Gunner because of his fucking name. I hate the name. And I've had a bias with, against him ever since. So I'm like, good. Piss off. Gunner. Yeah, I don't watch TNA. I don't know anything about these guys. I, I don't recall them making big waves, other than us making our jokes, so good riddance. <laughs> That's sad. It's like, Samuel Shaw, what are you known for? Well, there's these guys on this podcast that make fun of my name. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> what about you, Gunner? Well, I got a shitty name, too, <laughs> if you're asking for that. Well, let's he's got here. stupid tattoos as well. What was that? Gunner, he's got stupid tattoos. Uh, I've never paid attention to them. Here's the, the issue, here's the other issue with Gunner. I imagine, like, if he accidentally brushed up against me, I'd have to throw my shirt away. Yeah, you would get a disease. Yeah, he looks he, he like he looks really fucking greasy, like Hep C or something. Like he yeah. looks like he's being dunked in the fryer a couple times. He's really nasty. Gunner. They'll probably be able when GFW though. I don't see why not. Are they people that uh, Jarrett kind of likes? I think Jarrett like Gunner. Hmm. Maybe. If so, they'll definitely pop up. But... He's just like, hey, Chris Hero, you look great. Not Chris Hero, fucking uh, uh, Chris Harris. They're all the same. They're all shit. Who would you take if you had to? Braden Walker or Gunner? I'd take Braden Walker because you can do something with that, even if it's just comedy. <laughs> you want him just so you can keep doing the knock-knock thing? <laughs> yeah, I'd totally just have him interrupt like the top guy's promo. Um, like, for a job match, and I'm gonna knock your brains out, and then you just get still taken out in five minutes <laughs> speaking of people leaving companies Dolph Ziggler the rumor going around right now is that he might be leaving WWE when his contract expires because he is getting frustrated with his spot in the company I know that you guys have been down on Ziggler for a while um, I still like the guy but do you think that this is the right move for him if so where should he go because the rumor right now is that he would go to TNA and that can't be a good move no, I don't. I don't think there's any legitimacy to this. If Dolph Ziggler is leaving, it, it would be to pursue a new career. He's already in the big time. It doesn't matter if he's not being booked. I, I, let me tell you something. Most of these guys that work for this company don't give a shit about being champion all the time and all this other bullshit. Mm -hmm. These guys are happy to have a job. Let me ask all you out there: Do you just want to be the top guy in your company? Is it all you fucking care about handling all that responsibility and being the top person? No, there's a number of people who do. Most people just want a job. They just want to go to work. They just want to do their shit. Does, uh, doesn't that speak volumes to what Vince was saying, though, that these guys aren't hungry? Perhaps. If you're, if you're just happy to be complacent and have a job, which, don't get me wrong, I can see the reason why. 
you get national exposure, you're making mm -hmm. a decent to great and fantastic wage. I don't knock these guys for being like that, don't get me wrong, but then the guys that complain about their push, they've only got themselves to fucking blame. I don't, Dolph Ziggler doesn't strike me as a guy who's like that, who's really that egotistical and is worried about his push or whatever. He's a guy who's happy to do what he loves to do, hang out with all these cool people, most of whom he's become very close friends with, like Zack Ryder and Kofi Kingston. If he's moving on, maybe he wants to, you know, pursue family life or, or just do something else, get into real estate, who knows. But if he's, if he's going to wrestle, he's staying home. He's staying in WWE. I don't buy that at all. That's the thing that makes this seem like bullshit to me, because why would you ever go to TNA? Not only are they a sinking ship, you know, when it comes to why would you go there, like, for publicity and stuff, they can't pay anybody. So it can't be for a money thing. <laughs> Apparently they could pay Rey Mysterio if they offered him a giant uh, contract. Yeah, well. But, I mean, like, Ziggler seems like he's somebody who is really into a lot of other things. Like, uh, he's been really getting into comedy. Comedy, yeah. And he's involved in a lot of, like, the network stuff. Knock, knock. Who's there? My career. <laughs> but, like, I checked out Swerved this week, and he's, like, super gung-ho about doing the one of the little um, pranks that was on there. And they bought it as, like, you know, the, the setup for it was that they were going to film another thing for the network, and it was, like, the top ten most shocking WrestleMania things and stuff. And he's telling them what to do, like Zack Ryder and Alex Riley and stuff, and they're just listening to him like he's a goddamn director and stuff. Ziggler probably backstage has done so many of these things, and he's so talented for that kind of stuff that he's actually into the production side of things, too. He could definitely be a lifer. He could be one of those yep. guys who, if he wants to go into production, if he wants to be an agent, if he wants to go down to the developmental center and help out there... He, he's a guy who's kept a clean enough background. He's been a company guy doing anything they need him to. Like, again, this guy has a job, and he has a job for life. There's no good reason he would walk away from that. This is nothing but vicious scoop, 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 scuttlebutt. Personally, tell... on the... go ahead. Personally, on the matter, I don't think they'd let him go. As much as I think he's reached his limit and he's peaked as a performer and peaked as far as his popularity is ever going to get, he's still an asset. Um, I He's an asset. I was thinking that too, and I was like, "Should I make the joke?" Um, I don't remember which wrestling seminar it was, but uh, that I was at, someone was like, "As long as you can wrestle in the WWE, there is a place for you because they need guys to make other guys look strong." So, if you can do that, that's fine too. But um. I don't know if he's a guy that's getting pissy because of a push or not. I don't know the guy personally. There might be an air of truth to it. Maybe someone's put the feelers out there and spread a rumor. Uh, TNA's been reporting like that they've wanted a new WWE star to jump shift. Maybe it's just someone that's gone, hey, we might be able to get Dolph Ziggler, and that's got passed through the grapevine, and now it's a whole big thing, even though it isn't. <laughs> that's a big one. <laughs> But, uh, I was not, like, he's gonna jump shift. Yeah. <laughs> Did I say shift instead of shift? Yeah. yeah. I wasn't gonna say anything. Jump shift. <laughs> Ultimate warrior mode. Uh, no, I mean, I think that you get somebody like him, if they can have, like, Heath Slater still be around after all these years, and he's somebody who's not taken seriously at all, and you got Ziggler who is so damn good in the ring, and he's got the production side of things that he's good for. And he's a guy that's good for media. Like, in general. Like, you could send off Ziggler to a TV show and he'd be good with it. You know, he could do a guest spot on a convention. And, you know, like, that's one of the reasons why they use The Miz so much. And Xavier Woods is getting really into that now with uh, E3. He's been doing stuff for the Up, Up, Down, Down channel that he has. Ziggler is a really good asset for that kind of stuff. And you can tell that Ziggler loves WWE, too. So why would he leave for something like TNA? It makes no sense at all. And you know what's amazing about Dolph Ziggler is that he's a guy who's been such a company guy and yet also managed to maintain the love of the IWC. Like, yeah. he's still someone that they support as if he was an indie darling, but he's not. He is 100% a WWE creation. But yet he's beloved as the same as, like, a Daniel Bryan or a CM Punk would be. I think a lot of it has to do with he's very talented and WWE won't get behind him. So he's the, yeah, fuck WWE, push this guy, person they can get behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. That, that's all it is. It's they get to bitch and they like bitching. 
Plus, he knows how to play up to them. Like, you know, a lot of people, like, uh, say, like, a Randy Orton, you don't see him tweeting. No. But Dolph Ziggler is like, hey, I'll have some fun. I'll tweet out something that kind of seems like a shoot kind of thing and stuff, and people will play around with it and stuff. Like, Ziggler knows his audience. You know what I would like to see, though? Is Dolph Ziggler to have, like, six months off television. What, to uh, just... Like get a break? Uh, yeah, just just, just like? a just a break. For, I think he's been oversaturated. Him and Lana should have gotten married and then went on a honeymoon and then not came back until Rusev was healed. They could have done a vignette where Rusev attacks them on their honeymoon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now instead of attacking them because he's still injured, they just keep showing those shots of him looking really sad. <laughs> and then it's like uh, that they get to the part of the wedding where it's like if anybody thinks that these two should not wed. Speak now or forever hold your peace. And he's trying to get up to say something, but he keeps stumbling on his crutches. <laughs> All right, nobody wants to say anything. Not even Rusev. All right, I guess you're married now. And he's like, fuck. God damn it, I hate you guys. <laughs> We're summer. Well, sad Rusev is sad. Oh, sad little potato. You know what they need to do with sad Rusev? Is play the Hulk theme. <laughs> do, 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 do. But they need to do like a Russian remix of it. <laughs> do 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 do. <laughs> They're just gonna do Tetris. Do 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Now I got that in my head. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, last hot tag that I have listed here. This is something that's just kind of a quick thing or whatever like that. But um, on WWE Swerved, they were doing a section of the Hall of Fame, and apparently they blurred out Darren Young's boyfriend's face, and he's all bitching and complaining about it. Like, why you do that? That that's disrespectful. Can Darren Young just go fuck himself? He's crying about something every fucking week. All right, you're gay. That's some type of minority. We get it. Congratulations, you come out the closet. Stop being a fucking bitch. Jesus fucking Christ, it's something every week with them. Like, I can't wait for the day he gets released. I really don't like him as a personality. Did you hear about how Darren Young's trunks bunch up a little bit on the bottom part of his left butt cheek? Oh, I, don't know how he ex- now. I don't know how he could expect to perform under these conditions. <laughs> I just don't get the complaining about this. They blur people's faces all the time and stuff. His boyfriend probably never signed a waiver. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah. Yeah, it's because gay people can't read. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> WWE, WWE might. <laughs> I'm just speaking on behalf of WWE's lawyers. That's all I'm saying. I want to know how that logic works, though. Oh, shit, I had anal sex. I forgot how to read. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, the bad part is when I edit out the part where you say you don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. People are still gonna know it's a joke. <laughs> yeah, Sean. <laughs> I, I apologize <laughs> for whatever comment you say next. For for all the comments I, I say, I don't think. Okay. What if that was their mentality though? Like, what if backstage they're sitting there going. So, you know what I really like about this Swerved episode? Renee Young is really good at it. You know, she's she's adorable. She's great. And it, it's a real fun segment here with Hornswoggle jumping up and scaring people and stuff. But I don't think that gay guy could read when we did this. <laughs> it's like a bunch of people standing around a conference room. Um, Vince, I don't think that makes any sense. Oh, you, you should just blur him anyway. Oh, well, that's Pat. Pat, can you, yeah. read? you can't read, right? Uh, no, <laughs> you know Vince, what? You're right, Vince. You're always right, Vince. Yeah. Vince, we have a budget on this one. We can only blur out some faces. We can't do that and put a blue dot over Christian's face. You oh, well, fuck. Let's get rid of his fucking last name, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, so guys. So well agreed. Fuck Darren Young. <laughs> yeah. Tell us what you think about all these thought tags. Uh, is it a good reason for Darren Young to be complaining about that? Do you think uh, these injuries are going to really screw up the people like uh, the authority with Jamie Noble being missing? Do you think that Eric Rowan being missing is going to really screw up uh, Luke Harper? Where do you want to see Samuel Shaw and Gunner go? Should they go to NXT or should they go to hell? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> so uh, leave your comments below. Tell us what you think. And we are going to take a break with the rest hold and come right back with the main event. Superstar scores, Brock Lesnar.